If you just finished your Power BI report, great job. But now you're stuck because your Excel that I saved on your desktop and you're trying to get those scheduled refreshes going. Let me show you a clever workaround to liberate your files from the confines of your computer, ensuring your reports are always up to date. Let's get started. Okay, so the first step towards a solution is to identify where your data even is. So I have this little Technotropica report here and I will go to home and I will locate this transform data icon, click on this arrow and click on data source settings. And what this will do is show me the exact path where my Excel file resides. So I can see that I have it on my OneDrive and it's actually on my desktop. So this won't work with your PowerBI.com. So let's, let's migrate this data somewhere else. Using SharePoint with Power BI is actually very easy. You just need a SharePoint site which you have access to. It can also be a site inside Teams. Or if you don't have a SharePoint access, just add, ask your administrator and they'll fix one for you. Uh, but I'll use this example, this, this test site which I have set up for myself and I've already uploaded the Excel file that I'm gonna use with my Power BI report. So once that's done, just copy the link to your SharePoint site. This is the link to my SharePoint site which I'll copy and paste into Power BI. And now go to transform data. And as you can see, if I click on my sales here and I, if I go back to source, I see I have this Excel.workbook formula, which I would like to keep because this is the thing that extracts data from Excel, Excel spreadsheets, Excel files essentially. But I need to source the file from a different source. So at the moment, the file is being sourced using this file.contents, but I want to change that to use SharePoint instead. So the first step I need to do is just click on new source, click on more, select SharePoint folder then click connect and now I need to paste in the URL of my SharePoint site. So this is this is the URL. So you might have noticed that I didn't copy and paste the whole SharePoint URL that I see in my Chrome bar because this will cause this issue in Power BI but you really need to take care to only paste in the exact URL of your SharePoint site without any folders or document libraries and you can very easily check that by simply removing the parts before slashes and checking if you still get the same thing. So if you, after you remove the very last part before the slash, press enter and check if you are still on the same page. If you are, then this is still your SharePoint site URL. Okay, and now what I need to do is sign in into Power BI. So for that, I can click on Microsoft account, sign in. And then once you sign in using your Microsoft account, you should see you are currently signed in, which is perfect. Then you just need to click on connect. And now Power BI is gonna try and download all the files within the folder. Power BI listed all the available files within my site. Just try to find the right file and then click on transform data. Okay, and now what you have here is this new query which lists every single file within your SharePoint site. So what you can do and what I'll do is just rename this to SharePoint source because this query will serve like a foundation for every other query. So every time I need to use this SharePoint document library or this SharePoint site, I'll just use this query. So instead of always clicking on new source and doing all the hard work, I can just use this query. And now what I need to do is right click on it and click on reference. And let me do just one more step and then I'll explain what happens. So. I have my Excel file here, it says exa example sales data and I can just click on this binary button. And what this will do is it will, I have my Excel.workbook formula again, which is what I'm looking for. And now I can rename this file to RF, RF stands for raw file, example sales. Look at what we did. So as I said, this will be our source for any SharePoint folder or file that we would like to get from this SharePoint location. And to use it, instead of just using it directly, we have referenced it because we can reference this link as many times as you need. So if you have five files saved inside this SharePoint document library, you can just reference this source five times and create five raw files here. And the benefit of that is that if the URL of your site changes, you can just simply go ahead and change one URL instead of changing 
multiple ones. So if we check this, this example, you, we can see that the source is not actually pulling the data directly from SharePoint, but it's pulling the data from this SharePoint source, which we referenced. So if your SharePoint URL changes sometime, or if there are any changes here on the SharePoint source, you can just perform the changes here and they will affect every subsequent query that you reference, which is kind of a nice way to, to decouple your sources from your actual files that you need. And now after all this work, what we can do is go back to sales, go back to source, and I'll just click on advanced editor um, and I'll replace this excel.workbook with RF example sales. And I'll click on done. And as you can see, if I go back to source, I, s I see my RF example sales. And if I go to the last step of my transformations, I can still see the, the exact data that I need. And this data will work with my charts. And if I click on close and apply now, Okay, I can see that my sales refreshed correctly, which is the only thing that I'm looking for. But I can see that this SharePoint source has some issues because there are there are other types of files in here as well. There are not only Excel files, which is the only thing that Power BI understands, but there are some images and other things that uh, Power BI just can't work with. So that's fine. Just le let's just leave that because sales has been refreshed correctly. Now I can click on close. And this is, this is my data. If I go back to the transform data tab again and click on data source settings, I can see that the local file has disappeared from this list and this has been replaced with my SharePoint site. And now I can go ahead and publish this report. I of course want to save changes. I'll just select my workspace, but you can select the workspace you're working in. And once this succeeds, I can just click on open and this will show me my report on powerbi.com. This is great. Let me just check if scheduled refresh is possible now. So I can go to more options, view semantic model, file and settings. And the only thing that I need to do is add the credentials for SharePoint. So to fix that, just click on edit credentials, click on OAuth 2, select whatever privacy level you were using before. I'll just click on organizational and click on sign in, sign in with your Microsoft account and you should be good to go. And now that I've done that, you can see that the error went away and I can click on configure a schedule, I'll refresh schedule. I can turn that on, uh, refresh frequency will be daily and I can add up to eight times i believe so yep looks like this is working and we succeeded so every time now that you need to reference any other files on your sharepoint document library you just go to sharepoint source right click on it reference and you should be good to go let me know if this was useful i would appreciate if you liked and subscribed to my channel and yeah see you soon cheers bye